Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I posted a video. Had a quick little family vacation in Hawaii and I'm ready to get back into discussing cartridges. And in today's video, we're going to talk about myths for Magnum cartridges. I'm going to discuss three, maybe myths is a little too harsh of a word, misconceptions about Magnums. Hope you guys enjoy the video. The number one myth or misconception about Magnums is the belt. Now, a lot of YouTubers, I'm guilty myself, have always talked about how if you're a reloader, you just want to stay away from having a belted cartridge. It's, it's just kind of a nightmare to reload for. I want to go a little discussion into this to see, is it really that bad to have a belted Magnum? Let's find out. First off, why do so many Magnums have a belt? Well, it all starts from this cartridge here. The 375 H&H is the grandpa or parent case to so many of the Magnum cartridges. Why did the 375 H&H have a belt? Well, as you can see here, there's really no shoulder on a 375 H&H, &H, and there certainly isn't one on a 300 H&H. &H. And so the designers, of the H, H Magnum, put a belt on it for head spacing purposes so that it'll fit in your chamber properly. So a lot of the Magnums, especially the popular ones, have belts because, well, they just copied the 375 H, H. So a lot of your Weatherbees, almost all of them, have belts. Your 7mm Remington Mag, your 300 Winchester Mag, your 338 Win Mag, there's a lot of them that, that just have a belt. And maybe when they were first introduced, the rifles used the belt for head spacing purposes. But in modern rifles, they just use the shoulder like all other cartridges do. So in 2023, a belt is pretty useless. Another common myth about the belt is that it's helped to strengthen all that powder you're going to be burning. So it's, it's supposed to be a beefier case with the belt. Eh, that's not really true. So let's get back to the misconception or myth that I'm talking about with belted magnums. Well, a lot of reloaders kind of stay away from the belt. Not a lot, but the claim is, is and um, there's obviously truth to it, is that... You know, it is a pain to full-length resize a belted cartridge. A lot of times you have to get an extra device to be able to get all the way down to the belt. Because if you don't, you're going to get a little bump and then you might have feeding issues. Uh, this is a 257 and you can see my full length went down to there. So far, I don't see any kind of ridge between the belt and where it's been full-length resized. Now again, I'm not... The biggest expert on all this but i've reloaded a lot of 300 weatherby a lot of 257 weatherby some seven millimeter rem mag and some 300 wind mag and i have yet to run into an issue with the belt whether it's separating or it's creating that bulge and having feeding issues i've had nothing no problems whatsoever and I've reloaded a lot of 300 Weatherby where, um, you know, I've gotten at least eight firings out of my brass and zero issues with the belt. In fact, the first thing to go with my belted cartridges is more of a, a problem that I have is I'm loading these cartridges a little too hot, but the pocket primers are the first to go in all of my belted cartridges. The second myth or misconception, this one's probably more of a misconception than a myth, is barrel burners. So in front of me is a 28 Nosler. This one is definitely known for having short barrel life. I would say at worst, you're gonna have about 800 rounds before you might need to switch out your barrel to at best, you're looking 1200, 1300 rounds. And yeah, that doesn't seem like a lot, especially when you compare it to like a 6.5 Creedmoor or even a 308 Winchester that will have like 5,000 rounds or more. When you're shooting a big Magnum like a 28 Nosler, are you going to be shooting that many rounds a year? Let's just do the math real quick to see what an average hunter, what kind of barrel life they can get 
when only shooting, I don't know, say 50 to 100 rounds a year. All right, let's just do some quick math. At worst, let's say you get 800 rounds and you divide it by 100 rounds a year, which for some of you, that's pretty conservative. So yeah, not great. Eight years of barrel life. But let's say you really take care of your rifle, you clean it, you don't shoot it extremely hot. Uh, let's just do 1,300 rounds and you got about 13 years of barrel life. But what about the guys that are just going to sight in their rifle and shoot it maybe 50 times a year? So let's go back to 1,300 divided by 50. Divide by 50, suddenly you get 26 years of barrel life. So for those guys that are going to be shooting factory ammo that only shoot it a few times a year, your rifle is going to last you a very long time. Now lastly, I know those guys that have been around my channel will, will notice that, you know, I've taken a break from shooting my 257 Weatherby Magnum to kind of preserve barrel life. So you're probably thinking I'm a hypocrite for saying, oh, you don't need to worry about it. Um, well, I've got this 100 grain Barnes loaded up going 3,800 feet per second, a 101 grain bullet. And for a while, guys, to make content, to develop loads, and well, it's just a really fun rifle to shoot. I was shooting every weekend with this cartridge. And so, yeah, when you're shooting on a weekly basis with a barrel burner, you could say the 257 is yeah it could probably only last five years but a counter argument is when has it ever been a bad thing to have to get another rifle the last misconception i wanted to talk about is magnum cartridges have ferocious recoil i think it's too much of a general term yes the really light rifles and high powered cartridges yeah they're not going to be fun to shoot uh, the other day at the range, someone had a 338 Winchester Magnum, and it was in a very light rifle, and it was a bit much to shoot. However, in today's world, you know, a muzzle brake or a suppressor is going to help recoil so much with these Magnum cartridges. I have here is a Weatherby. It's a 300 Weatherby. It's a Weatherby Vanguard. And this thing, I'm not kidding, when I used to not have this, um, I've shot 30 out sixes that had a lot worse recoil than this 300 Weatherby. And I think a lot of it had to do with the weight of the rifle. This rifle's 10 pounds, but also the design of the rifle. You know, some rifles just take recoil much better than others. So, yes, Magnums can kick a lot. But there are so many tools you can use today, whether it's getting it in a heavier gun or, you know, putting a brake on it or a suppressor. It's going to take the recoil away. And I think one misconception with the high ring quality in cartridges is, well, you're not going to be able to be as accurate. And yes, generally speaking, a 6.5 Creedmoor is going to be much easier to shoot than a 300 Weatherby. Funny enough, though the most accurate loads that i've ever shot were with magnums with decent amount of recoil this here is with a 257 weatherby and it kicks a lot like a 30-06 and as you can see i'm getting very good accuracy out of the 257 weatherby and the greatest group i've ever gotten hand loading was with a 30 nosler and the 178 eldx this is a quarter inch group. This is a very high recoiling gun that did not have a break and did not have a can on it. And I was able to get quarter MOA. So I guess the purpose of this video was for those that are looking into getting a Magnum cartridge, don't be scared of these three things that people always tell you about, whether it's bad barrel life, it's ferocious recoil, or you know how pesky the belt is and in a lot of cases i just haven't found these to be problems at all uh, 
yeah, I haven't burned a barrel out. The belt has not been a problem at all for me. It's been great. I mean, there's really no need for it, but it hasn't been a nuisance. The recoil, there's so many ways to mitigate it or just practice a lot and you get used to it. 